women in the role of sirens, African American women in and their significance in Tennessee history. I am a historian by training. I am assistant director of the Tennessee Historical Commission, an agency which is responsible for the built historical environment, but I am also a professor at Fisk University, your neighbor down the street. Uh, in our historical black college. And there, just like we talk about diversity on the campus here, we talk about diversity on our campus. Uh, you may say you may not have many um, students of European descent, but I think it's very important that those of us in the African American community uh, or in the community of those in the African diaspora understand and realize that there is diversity even among us. When you look on the campus of Fisk University, we have students from the continent of Africa, from the Caribbean, uh, and American blacks. That is diversity among the black population. Um, and we're just beginning, our students are just beginning to understand that there is diversity among them. Uh, and it's very interesting when you have all three groups in one class. Um, you get into the culture and the ethnicity and many other aspects. When we look at history, history often recounts many people, places, and events that have brought society present. It gives voice to the struggles and the triumphs of those individuals and groups who have navigated in all of its immensity and multifarious facets, history connects the past, the present, and the future, manifesting that ebb and flow in the discourse of humankind. However, in the not too distant past, history mostly gave voice to the struggles of and the triumphs of the great white man. By acts of commission, Chronicles marginalized or omitted minorities and women from the narrative altogether. Yet in the last century, African American life was transformed, and it was the century that African Americans and women transformed America. While scholars generally frame their historical accounts, from the elite white male purview and characterize African American males as laborer and field hands, they all but ignored the African American female. By excluding the African American female experience, they suggested to the readership that gender was insignificant to the overall everyday life of the state's population. However, women played important and significant roles in the everyday lives of states' properties. If we look back some two centuries ago, at the 19th century, we find women such as business persons, Sarah Estelle, who owned and operated an ice cream parlor and a sweet shop in Nashville. From 1840 to 1860, her catering firm met the banquet needs of the firefighters, church socials, political parties, as well as serving parties and balls for the elite clients. Sally Thomas, a quasi-free slave, operated a laundry and a boarding house on the corner of Cherry and Dedrick Streets in downtown Nashville. Some of you may be familiar with the book by John Hope Franklin, In Search of the Promised Land. This book is about Sally Thomas and her effort to gain the freedom of her sons. If we look at the census, uh, we find that in the 19th century, 38 free black women own almost $250 million cumulative in real 
it might sound like a significant number today, but I'm saying that in 1860, there were 38 free black women who owned a quarter of a million dollars worth of property in 1860. That is before slavery ended. Black women agitated for civil rights before the beginning of the modern civil rights movement, which historians generally place around 1954. Before the beginning of that movement, there were women such as J. Frankie Pierce, who was among Nashville's first black public school teachers in the 1880s and was founder of the City Federation of Colored Women's Club. Pierce demonstrated to obtain restroom facilities for women of color shopping in Nashville's retail outlets. This was in the early 20th century. Adamantly objecting to the lack of restroom accommodations, Pierce led members of the City Federation of Colored Women's Club in a protest march on City Hall where they presented their demands. As an outcome of their protest, Montgomery Ward became the first department store in Nashville to furnish restrooms for African American women. You can see that Ms. Greenlee, who may or may not be here, is in that protest tradition of what has already existed. In 1918, when Dr. Maddie Coleman addressed a mass meeting at the colored YMCA denouncing Jim and Jane Crow Railway Associations and facilities, Pierce again brought out her club women to protest against segregated public facilities. The protest strategy of J. Frank Pierce and the Colored Women's Club was an indication of future methods to be employed in breaking down Jim and Jane Crow barriers for public accommodation. 